Hello world, I'm Attila. Today I will talk about the Never Split the Difference book. And uh, this was a book on negotiation. So it was written by an FBI hostage negotiator who like talks about his 24 years of experience. So it was very exciting. Um, negotiation is all around our lives. When you want a better grade in school, when you want a better salary, when you just buy a car, you want a better deal than, uh, than what is being offered. So you negotiate. So first it talked about, uh, you should affect your counterparts system one thinking. And uh, the system one and system two thinking is from the book Thinking Fast and Slow. And I made a summary and a review on that. So I will link it in the description and it's on the screen now. So you should check it out, but I will summarize it real quick for you. So our system system one thinking is, is when you think fast. And this is when you just observe information. And this is like uh, our beliefs about the world is based on it. And uh, system two thinking is uh, when you think, like when you control your thinking, when you think about stuff that you want to think about. And uh, our system two thinking is affected by our system one thinking. So when you are negotiating with someone, you should affect the other party's system one thinking. So you should uh, make them like you. And you should affect their inarticulate feelings. And uh, one of the main points of this book is that uh, people want to be understood and accepted. So you try to do this. Uh, so you should listen very carefully because uh, when people are listened, so not just listened on the surface, but like um, you really uh, put your whole focus on one person, like uh, that makes their uh, thoughts clarify, uh, clearer and they also become less defensive and they are more open to other points of views. So when you are in a conversation, usually you only listen to yourself, but everyone does this. But instead of listening to yourself, you should solely focus on the other person because they will appreciate it. And uh, when you are negotiating, you shouldn't rush things, take it slowly. And um, when we radiate warmth and acceptance, conversations just seem to flow and your voice is your most powerful tool because you can radiate this warmth and acceptance toward other people and then people will be attracted toward you. And uh, so there are essentially three voice tones available to negotiators. First is like this, the late night FM DG voice. And um, this is like talk, talking slowly and clearly projecting that you are in control. The second is this positive and playful, vo playful voice. And this is the voice of an easygoing, good-natured person. You should, when you talk like this, you should relax and smile. And this should be your natural voice, because if you are positive, people will like you. And the last voice that you rarely use is this direct or assertive voice when you just you use this when you want to wake up the other person but you shouldn't use this because uh, this voice will make them they will try to attack back and defend themselves so as humans we fear what's different and are drawn to what's similar so this is the basic of this technique called mirroring and um, this is fundamentally is when you try to be similar to the other people with verbal and non-verbal communications. So when you are talking to someone, you should smile because uh, if you smile, they will also smile too because they want to mirror you because they try to copy your behavior. And... Um, so you should try to create this bond with the other person. So if you smile, they will like you too. And um, 
I should try to understand, understand the other people's perspective and vocalize that recognition. So this is called technical empathy. And um, after you have done this, you should silence because the other person will try to fill in that void. Otherwise, they will feel awkward. So let's expand a little bit on this. The best way to deal with negativity is to observe it without reaction and without judgment. So just uh, say out their uh, behavior. So when you are negotiating, the other person has these fears and uh, they might not like the product. They think that it's too expensive. You should label these or acknowledge these fears and uh, turn them into positive thoughts. So don't talk a lot about it. Just say, um, it's okay to think that uh, this product is too expensive and then silence and the other person will have to react something. And after that, um, you will, uh, you can turn these thoughts into positive things like, uh, but it's expensive because it will help you and it will last you for a long time. And the next technique is you should list the worst things that the other party could say about you and say them before the other per person can. And uh, this will sound exaggerated when said out loud. So when you weren't nice, you can say, yeah, I am an asshole. And uh, like this said out loud from yourself will sound exaggerated. And the other person will like you because you know your, uh, your shortcomings. And uh, when we, then it talk about like the power of yes and no in a negotiation. So we typically love saying yes and we want the other person to say yes because we associate it with positive things. But in negotiation, it's not good because, for example, if a, if a salesman uh, calls you and they, they, you know that he is a salesman and they ask like, you like uh, clean, healthy water, don't you? You will say yes, but you fear that uh, they will make you buy something that you don't like. And... Uh, but if you said no, this no gives us safety and protection. So you can um, use this technique. Is You should ask questions that they will answer with a no. So they feel that they are turning you down and they have the upper hand. So for example, you don't want to be known as a bad person, do you? And... Um, so yeah, the, this no, no gives us safety and protection. Negotiation is about the other person convincing themselves that the solution you want is their own idea. So, so yeah, I can't add anything to this. And uh, when you are into a negotiation, you should summarize all the things that you have heard and you should add underlying emotions. And uh, with this, you can trigger the that's right effect. So, for example, yeah, this person is a dickhead that both of you are talking about. And uh, I understand you, why you hate it. And uh, they will say, <laughs> if you are not too aggressive, that yeah, that's right. And uh, that's because humans have an innate urge toward socially constructive behavior. So both of you want to solve a problem. And uh, yeah, with the that's right effect, they are finally happy to like, get a little bit closer to solving this problem. You shouldn't compromise. Compromising is about avoiding pain. You don't want to have a bad deal or you don't want to like lose that deal completely. And uh, but that's not good. People are ready to make agreements when they feel that they are treated fairly. So fair is a very powerful word. And uh, 
when the other party says that that's not fair, then you should like ask this with this open-ended question that like how it's not fair or what it's what is not fair. If you set a deadline, people will rush decisions and do things that are against their best interest. So as a negotiator, you might not have a deadline, but you set one nevertheless, because uh, that will make the the other person rush and uh, they will do bad things against their best interest. Before you make an offer, you should emotionally anchor them to a too low or too high point. So then when you come out with an offer, it seems reasonable. So let's use an example of that. You want to the other party to accept a very low wage. You will say that like, uh, ah, this wage is very low. It's too embarrassing. I don't know if I should say it. Maybe I should first, first just go to the next person who has a little bit lower expectations. They will, then you came out with an offer. So first you sh- set their expectations very low. And uh, then when they will think that like, yeah, it's horrible, it's horribly low. Then you came out with something bigger and they will be happy about it. Or uh, when you are negotiate when you are negotiating your own salary, you should um, set a range that like uh, people in this category usually earn around uh, 120 to 130 K per year. And with this range, the other person will think that like um, you are flexible because you have this range and uh, you can anchor them their expectations into very high. So if they say, for example, okay, then you will get a 110k mm, salary. That's lower than your set range, but that's still very good for you because you set their expectations very high. So the real value of anything depends on what vantage point you are looking at at it from and uh, like the other person that uh, the other technique that I use is like that people hate losing something so make sure your counterpart sees that there is something to lose by inaction so they can lose the wage completely when I said that like uh, I can go still to the next person who has a little bit lower expectations So then they fear losing this salary entirely and losing this job entirely. And uh, you should ask open-ended questions. So because the other party will try to think about the solution. And uh, with this disbelief that you asked an open-ended question, you can set them back. And uh, with an open-ended question, the other party have this illusion that they have the control. Because um, you should ask questions with uh, how and what. So how can I know that my daughter is still alive? And uh, by this, they will try to think about the solution. And because they say the solution, they feel that they are in control. And with questions like this, you will be able to control them, you will be able to push them towards a solution that is good for you, but they will think that like uh, they came up with the solution, with the answer, so they feel that they are in control. And uh, you should remain completely calm during the negotiation because that helps you um, be the best. And uh, if the body language and the tone doesn't align with the words of the counterparty, you should question back and the counterpart will appreciate it. So um, you can say like, is the deal done? The other person said that, yes. You question back like, um, I heard you say yes, but uh, I see that you are not entirely convinced. 
um, what's the problem we can solve it and we can work it out together they will say eh, nothing nothing but they will appreciate that you wanted to solve their problems and uh, if you say out your name you personalize yourself so the other person will like you so the author the name of the author is chris and uh, when he went into a shop the he asked like hi i'm chris what's that chris discount here and uh, the the cashier like so that like that's cute and nobody does this so he got like 10 percent discount just by saying out his name and like uh, making him more human with this then you talk about like bargaining there are multiple bargainer types the accommodator the assertive or the analyst the accommodator is uh, like the person all about like the personal relationship they think that like if you have a good relationship then they will be able to sell you on a good price the assertive it's the aggressive who wants to have the deal done as soon as possible because they think that like time is money and the analyst is like the exact opposite of this they think that like we should take the time and with time we will be able to come to the best agreement for both of us so when you are negotiating you should first make the first like the other party set the first of four and you should be ready to take a punch back so like be ready to get an extreme offer and uh, don't encore your um, expectations too high and then it told uh, like this strategy first you should uh, start with a uh, 65% of the origin of the price that you want to achieve in your end and then increase this gradually to 85 95 and 100 percent and by like uh, the change becoming less and less the other person will think that like they they squeeze you they um they you really don't want this price and the other technique that you could use is to end in a not even number and um, it gives weight to it because they will think that like you really calculated this and this is like the best price the highest price that you can possibly give and uh, then it told up like uncovering secrets and a great negotiator can use his skill to uncover secrets so these unknowns are the black swans and um, when uh, people seem to be irrational they are usually not you should uncover these reasons so if you want to buy an apartment and the seller wants to sell it for a very unreasonably low price you should uh, uncover this reason it can be a fraud or uh, the seller might have a time constraint so they will uh, go to america or they will go to Europe and they don't have a lot of time and you and if you uncover these reasons you have an advantage because if they don't have time you can uh, waste their time because they you know that like with time they will they must go lower with their offerings and uh, when uncovering these secrets these unknowns FaceTime discussions means a lot because if you see the person then uh, nothing like a video call not on a phone it really gives a lot in with the face-to-face -face discussion and the last was that we we trust people more when we view them as being similar or familiar so this is like the similarity principle so you can use this to your benefit so you might research the other party a little bit and you can uncover their re religion and you can say that like uh, yeah i am jewish and uh, then they can say that like 
yeah, I am too, and they will, or they might not say it, but they will think about it. And this similarity, like we trust people from the same religion more, a little bit maybe. I'm not religious, so I don't know. Um, that was this book. It was very interesting. I also listened to the TED talk of this author and like it fascinating how cool he talks. And uh, you should really watch it. I will link it in the description. You should check it out. It was fascinating. And uh, like my thoughts about this book, it was very interesting. But like uh, he worked 24 years in the FBI. Then he quit his job to start making a lot of money by uh, like talking with businessmen to teach them negotiation and uh, writing a book. So it sounds like that um, even if he was the very best in the FBI, he earns a lot more money this way. This is the usual problem. You can be the best in your job, but even then you will earn more money selling how to best how to be best in this job and how teaching how to be the best in this job so um, this was this book you should subscribe to my youtube channel if you are interested more in more books like this uh, my pot my videos are also available in a podcast form just search for your uh, for Attila on the word in your favorite podcast player I'm also available on Twitter. I will put uh, my handle in the screen and it's in the description. So you can also recommend me some books that I can make a review and a summary of it. So that's it for today. Thank you for coming in. Bye bye.